overall, when we take a look at the way this shortened week has begun, where do we want to put our focus? Where is the relative outperformance month to date as we're rolling into the end of the month? Now, the end of the month is going to create a little bit of one of two possibilities. One would be what's performing well that we anticipate performing well into June or two profit taking. So what's performing, right? Versus where might we want to take profit? Or what do we want to cut loose because it's underperforming? Now, when we think about what could be cut loose, take a look at the lower part of this range here. If at the end of May, someone who's holding names within this group, these groups, thinks, wait a minute, I'm not so positive that energy, consumer discretionary, home builders, oil and gas explorers, or even industrials are what are going to follow through into June. Now on the flip side, take a look at your top five, six, SMH, XLK, GDX, XME, right? Those are your top names where if we're thinking, is, is NVIDIA going to continue to move higher into June? Probably right into the split. Qualcomm is strong. AVGO is strong. Hard for traders not to want to keep with SMH. So as far as performing, SMH. As far as performing, got to put XLK in there too. XLK is heavily weighted with Apple, which we'll take a look at today. It's also heavily weighted with NVIDIA and AVGO. So we take a look at, again, where that performance is. And XLK is likely going to continue to not only look strong into the end of the month, but likely see more buying into the beginning of, of June. And then that brings us to names like gold miners and metals. Now, if you want to know what gold miners and metals are most, most likely to do, and again, they are strong, keep an eye on copper, HG futures, and keep an eye on gold. GC futures. And as we're taking a look at futures, this is a really good reminder that as we're going into the last week of May, the S&P and the NASDAQ have both organized into uptrends. And this, this really, you can see, we started printing the green trend indicator on the 23rd, it followed through on the 24th, and here it's still going strong here on the 28th. And that's the case on both the S&P and the NAS. So this is not the time to necessarily be bearish on the NAS or the S&P, but it is time to remember that not only as we go into the end of the month, where we talk about the whole profit taking versus continuing to perform conversation, we also have the PCE. So maybe that's the third P this week, profit taking, performance, and the PCE. And ultimately, the PCE is going to leave its mark on May because that's the inflation metric that the Federal Reserve uses when they start speaking about whether or not inflation is within their, their goal, within reach. That will definitely have an impact on the target rate probabilities, and it will definitely have an impact on whether or not, as we go into the end of the month, if the expectations are for the September meeting to cut or to hold. And right now, right now you can see September is, is inching more and more and more to a hold. This is a very unusual time in the indices for buyers relying on lower yields, on lower rates uh, as we go into the end of the year because this is about as not dovish that September has looked in a very long time. Now, just because it looks this way at 3.50 p.m. on Tuesday doesn't mean that come 8.31 a.m. Eastern on Friday that these may not look markedly different as we get that PCE data. So there is data that can absolutely change minds and in a heartbeat, forget the technicals, forget the flow. If that PCE number comes in cooler, Heads up, now the Federal Reserve has a little bit more of a green light to start talking about rate cuts. If that PCE comes in hotter, higher, forget about it, right? And that's that's how important that piece of data on Friday can be. Now, in the in the meanwhile, it's early in the week, so we can put in some, some swings in some relative outperformers. And, and the two places that I really like as we're starting off the week is the movement lower into the 
price movement range on the daily time frame on Apple. And I also like movement in SMH because a lot of traders are asking me about semiconductors because of NVIDIA. But NVIDIA is not the only great name. It's not the only hot hand in semiconductors. Keep an eye on Qualcomm. This one's been extremely strong as well. So if I have a number of stocks within the semiconductor sector, all moving higher. So let's take a look at SMH. For the number of these stocks all moving higher, one of the best ways to take advantage of it is to say, oh, if semiconductors are moving higher and I can point at NVIDIA, Taiwan Semi, ABGO, Texas Instrument, Qualcomm, one really powerful way to take advantage of the strength in all five of those top six weighted names is simply to buy a dip in SMH. And that's a very powerful way to take advantage of what's happening in semiconductors now. So this is where the focus is as we're going into the shortened week and the end of the month, going into the PCE. A lot going on and there will be some opportunity. Think of it as two timelines from now to 8.30 a.m. Friday and then after the PCE going forward. It could be a very, very different world at that point. Hey traders, Ragi from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.